Okay guys, it's time to tan hides again. We're tanning sheep hides and a big piece of cattle skin. And today we're reflushing, scudding. Scudding is basically removing the liquid from the hide and then we soak it and then remove the liquid again. And we do that by scraping. We'll talk more about that. I also have a problem with this cattle hide and I think we'll address that first. Okay, so there was a leak in the tub that this hide was soaking in. The hair was coming out last time I checked it, which was a weeks ago, and I probably could have dehaired the whole hide, but something happened in between and the hair started sticking. And it's not just sticking, but when you scrape over these spots, they feel crusty and weird. At first I was like, what is that? And then I was like, you know what happened? When lime is exposed to air, it carbonates and turns into limestone. So here we have this hide that's saturated with lime, coated with lime. The water like uh, drains out and exposes parts of the hide and the lime turns back into limestone and forms this like weird crusty weirdness on the hide. Uh, and again, like locking the hair in place. That's my theory. So if I'm right, vinegar may help uh, reverse this. So let me throw this on the beam and I'll show you what I mean about the, the weird crustiness of it. And unfortunately, it's a, it's a lot of the hide. This hide was on top of the, the soaking hides and um, I think even with this piece of wood, you'll be able to hear it. You hear that? That has it a little bit. And that has it. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's like a sandpapery type of sound, like that. And I'm getting some stuff out and some stuff off, but there's clearly something wrong here. So the question is, how much vinegar would I need? And is that gonna damage the hide if I use enough to actually, you know, affect the change in the skin? Fortunately, I have a ton of apple cider vinegar that I made by accident in a big container over here. But I don't see proceeding with this hide until I try to do something with it like that. I'm glad this happened because if that is the problem, that cues me into something I didn't, you know, I didn't know about. Now acids like vinegar will have an effect on the hide as well and cause acid swelling. So right now this hide has undergone alkaline swelling. It's really thick, but the vinegar will also do that. It'll uh, swell and, and uh, plump up the hide. And in extreme cases, that'd probably be, you know, too much. So that's the reason I'm not gonna soak it in straight vinegar or just, you know, go ahead and dump a huge amount in here right away. Okay, this is a... Uh apples that I put in a big barrel here and I thought I might uh, ferment them in here but instead it just turned into a big batch of vinegar full of worms good for tanning though this is good strong sharp vinegar okay that's a lot but you know what let's just find out what happens hopefully that's enough Make sure this doesn't get rained in. How responsible of me. It's shocking, I know. Okay, so we can't really work on that today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scud sheep hides. Each time that you do this, it gets easier. So the last time, I mean flushing, and the last time going over it were kind of the two hardest parts. I found some similar spots on like, one of, at least one of the sheep hides I did where I was talking about like how it, it sounds like sandpaper and you scrape over it and it was just weird. So that supports my theory that that's what's happened is we basically deposited a skim of limestone on the hair side of that cattle hide. So there's a little rust on here. Uh, we don't want that and we don't want it in our hides in general. It's not very much, but you know, if I start using this without wiping the rust off, like a little line of rust gets on here or something, that will turn dark when I tan the hides because tannic acid reacts with iron. I did a reasonably good job of reflushing these last time. It was like the most thorough flushing they're gonna get, but already there's like a bunch of stuff that's loose and I'm getting a whole nother layer and look how clean this looks right now. 
Okay, you'll notice I'm back on the wood beam. I went and got a spoke shave and cleaned it up and it still has some issues and I'm, I need to pay attention, I'm not paying attention. It's got these big worm holes in it, it cracks, other inconsistencies. Um, those could damage the grain, uh, scraping over them, but I like this beam so much better than that plastic piece of crap that I'm gonna try to get by with this, but to keep checking my grain when I scrape over these things to see if I'm getting any kind of damage because then I will I will switch back to the other beam. It's also easier in some ways to damage the hide on this beam because there's less surface contact. So if I put X amount of pressure on a wide beam, I'm contacting a greater surface so there's less pressure on each part of the hide. And on a narrow high crowned beam, that pressure is really concentrated in one area. So that's another reason that I don't always like narrow beams. So if you're graining uh, hides for buckskin, if any of you guys do brain tan buckskin, then sometimes it's an advantage to have a high crown beam because you have a narrower area of contact and you can apply more pressure to a smaller part of the hide to get the grain off if you have difficult graining. Okay, again, I'm keeping my blade angle very low. You know, if I tip it up like this, it's going to start digging in. And I'm using a lot of slice, and I'm not using a lot of pressure. And I will do this another probably three times after this, at least two. You know, I go more by how clean the hide is, how clean the liquid coming out is, and how floppy the hide is. It's already starting to relax. As the lime leaves the hide, it will start to relax. It'll get thinner, it'll get much floppier, less rubbery, and that's what we want. That means a lot. we're getting the lime out. Okay, now there's a bump right there. See, when I scrape over that hole, it's like chattering, but, well, the grain looks okay right now, so. All right, so that's what I'm doing on the flesh side. As you can see, there's a pretty clear difference between, you know, this and this. It's not very hard, um, you know, it takes some time and you can't really rush it too much. The better your technique gets, the faster this will go. And again, each time this will get easier. And by the end, I'll mostly be pushing water out as the main goal. Um, right now I'm still kind of like stuck between that and trying to get some more of this stuff off. Okay, let's flip this over. Okay, I don't like the looks of that. So first of all, the dark stuff I think is just pigment in the skin. Can you see this right here and this discoloration? Hear that? What is that? Because that's how lime works. If you haven't watched them before, uh, check out my cool videos on making lime. I talk about the lime cycle, which is basically you take limestone or shells, which are the same thing, you cook it, and it dries off the carbon and becomes quick lime. And then you add water and slake it, and it becomes the lime that we use for tanning and building and plaster, mortar, processing corn for tortillas, all kinds of stuff. And then if that is exposed to air and it dries, it turns back into limestone. It's called the lime cycle. So as I said in the last uh, video, we do want to go over the hair side again. Uh, most of the hair's out, probably all of it. It's probably not necessary to go over it for that reason. But we want to go over it and get this stuff out. You see that? Get the tool clean. We're going to make sure the skin is clean. Everything's clean. Let's see what we can get out of this hide. Sorry, we're picking up a little bit of bark there, but... This is why. Milky, dirty, junk. So we want to go over the hair side at least one time after de-hairing. Probably better to do it a couple of times, but if you 
stop seeing any of this kind of action and when you squish the liquid out it just runs clear like water you can stop doing the hair side at that point but do i want to you know go through all this work and leave all this junk in my leather and just throw it in the bark tan to save like a little bit of work rhetorical question and a lot of that is literally mineral lime too and there is such a thing, I think, as a lime tannate, meaning a marriage or bonding of lime and tannic acid. And that's probably why most of the old writings are so emphatic about getting all the lime out of the skin. That aside from the other area we already looked at, this area also looks really different. And it sounds different under the scraper. And I, I think that's probably carbonated calcium, but I'm not sure. Okay, I'm not working hard at this. I'm just trying to be gentle so I don't damage the grain. I'm not trying to scrape anything off of the skin surface. In fact, I'm trying not to, because we want that uh, skin surface intact and smooth. That's the grain that forms a smooth part of the leather. And since I'm gonna do this again, I don't really, I'm not even being that systematic. Although if you're gonna be systematic, probably this is the time to do it. Okay, so I just wanna emphasize that, you know, this is a quick squeegeeing process and it doesn't need to take an hour. I kinda of like this uh, wooden dehair. I think I will try to make one out of bone or slate or antler or maybe a hardwood. In many hides, when you do this process, you'll see a lot of hair roots coming out, like little speckles. Oh, by the way, Another thing, in early in these videos, I was like, you know, I don't really need to save this wool. It's not that valuable to me and I can get wool. Within a few weeks, my friend wrote, she said, we just sheared 200 sheep, can't sell the wool. We're going to throw it in a ditch. Do you want it? And I'm like, no. <laughs> There's a perfect example of what I'm talking about with that weird weirdness. And it just, it sounds like... You hear that? Yeah, so weird. For now, I'll just throw these and stack them up on the beam until they're all done. Empty this out, put fresh water in, and put them back on the soak. Let's take a look at this. Wow, look at that weird color. So this is that weird hair on hide that I just threw randomly into like an, a very old vat of bark liquor that had been sitting around for a couple of years. And um, so it was all weird and fermented and funky. It had plenty of tannin in it, That's, that wasn't a problem. And you can see there's a bunch of stuff coming off here. See all that lime left in there? So putting this in lime after it was tanned probably made some kind of weird, yeah, um, lime tannate. I can see some milky looking stuff coming out of there. This is not gonna be a nice piece of leather, but it, it could be usable and okay. And uh, it's most of the way tanned anyway, so why not finish it? And even though it's like super ugly on the other side, it's never going to come out of the tan like all <laughs> the same even color. I mean, look at that. It's just all messed up. But I can dye it black. So with this one, I just want to go over the flesh side, get some of this stuff off. Yeah, so this Weeb 12 inch flusher is great. I mean, for the price, you can't beat it. It's stainless steel, so you can leave it laying around. You know, I haven't tested the edge retention. They claim that it's actually, you know, tempered tool steel. I kind of tend to like a little more weight on my tanning knives. That's a minor complaint. It's just like, you know, if I'm gonna design one, it's probably gonna have a little more weight than this, but it's not bad, it has, it has enough weight. The downside of a lighter knife is that it doesn't have this kind of like carry through momentum once you get it going. But the good part is you don't have to 
lift and push as heavy of a tool. So I just like the authority of a heavier tool, how it, like once you get it going, it kind of, but I'm setting up my forge. So hopefully I'll start using it and make up some prototypes of what I think a tanning knife should be for people that do what I do, like diverse generalized home tanning. Let's take a look at this squirrel here. I threw it in some wood ashes just to see if I could dehair it there. And it sat there for so long, um, but way before these sheep hides were started. And then I started the sheep hides and I threw it in the lime with the sheep hides. It's just never wanted to dehair easily. And now it's dehairing more easily because as I said, sometimes as you soak things in fresh water and that swelling of the skin starts to go down because it gets really rubbery it swells in thickness but it shrinks this way and it kind of just like smashes the hairs into the hair roots even though the lime and wood ash have already destroyed the hair roots and dissolved the uh you know the lower parts of the hair so now that i got it into some fresh water it's starting to dehair um, just out of curiosity i, I want to find out how the hair comes out if i soak it a little bit more and delime it more so let's let's stop with that part, just quickly do a little flushing on here if it holds together, because again, like months now, months in the line. And again, I'm not gonna knock myself out trying to get all this, this stuff off. Make sure this is below the surface. And it really, you don't have to do it because it might happen on its own, but it really helps and it's a really good idea to just stretch over the skins because that's going to make sure that they get really well saturated and if you do that a lot it, it helps remove the lime too i mean this is a totally valid way to remove lime um, also I, you probably didn't fail to notice how this is almost purple because the alkali you know the lime is alkali and it it changed the color of the tannin that was already in the skin. I'm going to go over both sides of all these sheep hides, put them in fresh water, and that's my day for today. Okay, I'm on the third one here, and I just wanted to show you something. This grain is harsh. It's harsh and sandy feeling. It's goose fleshy, sandy, pebbly, something, whatever you want to call it. So it'll be interesting too to try to affect that some more and uh, by putting it in a bait of hen manure. Maybe we'll do some comparison tests with uh, baiting some of them and not baiting others. So I'm gonna start draining this. Now here we go again with the same thing of the parts of the hide that were probably floating above the water or above the lime solution. Listen, they're weird. Next wants to drag in the mud. I just tie it in a knot like this. And again, there's another spot. And you know, these, if I tan these without dealing with them, they're gonna become discolored and weird. So we're gonna do some different things to see if we can address that. Vinegar is one. Lactic acid is supposed to be better. So the process we call drenching. If you've seen other tanning videos of mine, you might've seen me do that. Like fermented bran, you can use fermented dairy for the same thing. Anything that produces that lactic acid that makes, uh, you know, yogurt sour or sauerkraut. For real this time, I'm just gonna turn the camera off, finish this side of this hide, and then we'll put this on to soak and tie this video up and answer a comment that somebody left. Oh, I got another trick to show you before this video is over. Okay, rinse all this stuff off. There's all kinds of little shavings and scummy stuff. Okay, so I've got that clean. These are all treated the same way, so everything's clean. We're gonna go back in the water. Like scudding, you know, scraping them over again. Stretching is gonna also make water move through the hide, right? It's gonna 
get the hide filled with water, but each time you stretch it, it's gonna like push water out and suck more water in. So this is very effective. If you wanna speed this process up, spend more time stretching them. Um, this is still very rubbery, very limed feeling. Has started to relax a little, but not very much. But we'll see a big difference next time. Just from these soaking, let alone getting scraped again. Okay, so there's two. I'm just making sure that they're completely soaked up because if they're not, and I've pressed a bunch of the water out and I don't get that water back in, this process doesn't really work. Again, it's about passing a lot of water through. And look at what's happening as I stretch these. Again, I rinsed both sides of every hide. It's stuff coming out of the hide. Okay, so the final tip is that it's really easy to damage the beam when you're scraping off the edges. So there's a notch there, there's a notch there, there's a notch here, there's a notch there. And you can fix that with the scraping tool. Even a pretty dull tool, uh, certainly a little duller than this, but this is really at a great stage for flushing. It's a pretty safe tool to flush with, but it will still actually shave the wood. Now keep in mind that this wood is soft wood. It's either redwood sapwood or it's fir. So it's easy to shave and it's also damaged and it's wet. You know, damaged meaning that like it's been pressed on a lot and worked on a lot. So, and weathered. But it's just a matter of getting your tool angle right. One of the reasons I really like uh, big leaf maple for my tanning beams is because when you damage the beam, it tends to chip really clean instead of like peeling shreds off. And it's really easy to repair like this. So you can see I'm, I'm coming at this at a really sharp angle, but the tool's very flat, so it's not digging in. You can do quite a bit of dressing this way. And when I say I've done this a lot, um, dressing the beam this way, I mean a lot. I used to tan for money and just a lot of tanning. I'll damage the beam while I'm scraping and I, you know, I don't want to bust out like extra tools, spoke shave, draw knife, any of that. And I'm able to just dress it up really quick, feel it, you know, feel for the, the ridges and stuff. Okay, so all this stuff's just soaking. Let's address a comment before it starts pouring rain here. It hasn't got through the canopy yet. Okay, comments. First of all, no offense to you at all. You do a great job with this, but I must say this is the most disgusting craft I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, again though, like it's so satisfying to do this and watch every step you take. It gets cleaner and nicer and this, you end up with this beautiful leather. Like the contrast is part of the deal. Um, I mean, it's hard to understand that unless you've done it, but people who are tanners know exactly what I'm talking about, especially people that make like the natural tanning methods that I do. Dude, the hide needs to be entirely clean before soaking in tannin, otherwise it's more work and what you scrape off is wasted tannin. Okay, first of all, don't tell me what to do. Um, this comment ignores entirely the all important factor of context. Okay, what is my context? What is anyone's context? This is a contextless comment. So what he's saying is that if I don't get all the fleshy stuff off the flush side and I put it in tannin, it's going to waste tannin. Okay, so first off, that assumes tannin is only for tanning hides, right? It says that like this has a purpose, this is the purpose. If you don't use it for that purpose, you wasted it. However, when you leave fleshy stuff on the hide, like usually just a very small amount, when you take it out of the tan, that stuff scrapes off really easy and super nice and super clean. It's awesome. So if I approach it that way, I can just say, well, the tannin is a tool. One of the reasons I sometimes put hides in with a fair amount of like that membrane on the flush side is because I can use the tannin as a tool to make it easier to scrape off. So what's the work, okay? I can chop bark or I can scrape hides. And sometimes I'm gonna choose to chop bark. Also, I have so much tannin. I burn this stuff. 
in my fireplace. Like I feel bad about it and I keep throwing like chunks of firewood aside that have thick bark, hoping that like one of my friends will come here at the right time and chop it off and take it with them because I feel guilty burning it. If it comes off easy, I'll knock it off with a hatchet before I throw it in the wood stove and go throw it in my bark shed. Do you see that shed right there? It's probably like uh, seven by seven, six by six, something like that. That is mostly full of tan bark. So not an issue for me. You know, I can chop enough. If, if I leave a ton of fleshy stuff on the flesh side, I can chop enough tannin to tan that and then remove it in like, I don't know, like a minute or something with a chunk of bark and a hatchet. You know, if I'm exaggerating, what, two minutes? You know, so context, context, context. In the meantime, I'm gonna close my computer that's getting wet and all this stuff is just gonna soak until I come back. You know what, I am gonna change that and I wanna see if I rinse this off really good, put new water in it, like what that water looks like when we come back uh, next time. So now that I, I did those again and I stretched them out, I want you to see the difference. You see like even that little bit of re-soaking, you still see the rubber to it, but you're starting to see a difference in the hide. It's becoming cleaner looking and just more floppy. It's starting to let go a little bit. And it's clearly very well saturated with liquid, which again, that's important too. <laughs> Man, if I could, I would do like batches of hides every month like this. And that's why, that's what I wanna do, but I wanna have someone else do the work because I just can't, you know, I can't do that and all the other stuff I wanna do. Clean water in there, put those back and we'll see what they look like next time. Just since I still have my camera on and I was just getting wood and, and looking at this bark again, I'm just like, look at this tan bark that's gonna go in the fireplace and again, I keep sorting this stuff out, like I'll throw it to the side. Look at this, look at that. Beautiful, half inch thick, super rich. Look at this. <laughs> look at that, beautiful bark. Now again, if I have something like this um, and the bark's coming off, I'll just knock it off and save it. But you know, this is worth saving right here, even though it's thinner, that's still like, you know, three eighths of an inch. That's a bunch of tan bark. And it can easily be chopped off with a hatchet like right off the logs. Yeah, there's some back there that's like an inch thick. And if it's not like super nice, like if it's a little weathered or stained or something, I won't keep it. Uh, just That's just my context, you know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rinse the hides around so we can see uh, what the water looks like from rinsing stuff off the outside of the skins. Did a good amount of sloshing there water very very slightly murky now we're going to stretch these over again all of them systematically this is the tail so i'm going to go across the hide here we have the neck no where's the neck i'll find the neck someday anyway it doesn't really matter there it is stretch it both directions is what i'm saying widthwise and lengthwise alternately because that's going to pump water through the skin so you know some of you are already thinking uh well couldn't you do that in the washing machine yeah and a lot of the tanning apparatus are basically big spinning drums and agitators and stuff like that so in a micro tannery i would definitely be looking at finding a free or cheap front loading washing machine um would be just great for all kinds of tanning. You could do the actual tanning part in the solutions, like the tannin solution. This elephant skin on the necks is so trippy. That's gonna have some kind of like creative specific use. Well, you can already see what I'm saying, is you can tell that stuff is coming out of the hide and the way to get it out is to move liquid through the hide, move fresh water through the hide. Now we're back to like this murky stuff. Is this a substitute for scudding? Well, the thing about scudding, well, first of all, I suspect that it removes more stuff from the hide because it's really putting it under mechanical pressure and pressing stuff that might be a little more solid. You know what I'm saying? Like 
maybe a little less soluble. But you're also going over the flesh side over and over and getting it cleaner and cleaner. And you have to do that anyway, right? So why not just keep doing it, you know, four times you achieve both things. And by the time you put it in the tan, like almost all that membrane is gone. Here's my new tanning stick from the last video. Okay, so here we are the next day, and uh, I just want to show you how what the flesh side looks like now and how the this process is going to go, because I'm not going to film this process anymore. I got a bunch of dirt on this hide. Um, somehow. But watch that there's not much coming off and how fast I'm going to go over. Now I'm really just mostly squeegeeing out water. So that's it. That's what I was trying to say, like each time you do it, it becomes faster. If I run across like a patch of tissue that I missed, and it's real obvious, I might kind of go after it. But it's mostly going to be like this. It's not so much scraping it anymore as it is just pushing out water. But there is stuff coming off, you know, don't get me wrong. But it's not a lot. 